Welcome to Learning English with Captain Vinoy Varagal, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's College, Dev Greek Old Court, Kerala. We have a number of uh, very useful and thought provoking essays, poems, and diary entries in A05 Signatures, the prescribed text for the undergraduate students of the Colleges of University of Calicut. Signatures is the one one of the common English courses and uh, we are today looking at uh, part of uh, the uh, book the Nobel Prize winning title of uh, Svetlana Alexievich Voices from Chernobyl and uh, the very part of uh, the very book Voices from Chernobyl the first part we discuss, which is prescribed for the students of uh, the University of Calicut, is titled A Solitary Human Voice Excerpt from Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster. This essay has a lot of significance in the 20th century as well as the 21st century because it is drawing our attention to the gruesome, grotesque, evil, destructive and disastrous aspect of uh, nuclear uh, weapons and nuclear reactors. This wonderful uh, book, Voices from Chernobyl, is written by Shvetlana Alexievich. Shvetlana Alexievich. And we know that Svetlana Alexievich title uh, Voices from Chernobyl won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2015. And uh, the Nobel Prize Committee praises Svetlana Alexievich for introducing a new literary medium or a new literary form of her own, which is known as documentary fiction or docu-fiction and the Nobel Prize Committee said that the prize is given to her for her polyphonic writing and uh, this polyphonic writings of uh, Shvetlana Alexia which is a monument to suffering and courage in our time. Voices from Chernobyl is a monument to suffering and uh, courage in our time because there are thousands of people who suffered incomparably, indescribably, in a heart-rending way. And these people, all those people who suffered in such a heartbreaking and heart-rending way are courageous. They continue to live to the very end of their life, to the last day as it is designed by God Almighty or fate or destiny. So this title has a lot of significance and uh, it is once again, I repeat the words of uh, the Nobel jury, it is noted for the polyphonic writings of Shvetlana Alexievich a monument to suffering and uh, courage in our times. Let's look at uh, the life of Shvetlana Alexievich right now. Shvetlana Alexievich was born in ivano frankivsk Ukraine in 1948 and uh, has spent most of her life in the Soviet Union and present-day Belarus with prolonged periods of exile in Western Europe. She started out her life as a journalist and later she developed her own non-fiction genre which gathers a chorus of voices to describe a specific historical moment. And uh, she, the kind of writing of uh, Shvetlana Alexievich is what is known as docu-fiction. So she, just like any journalist, goes to the very site or the location of uh, the incidents and of course she writes down everything 
and this is what journalists do this is what Shvetlana Alexievich did but what she does is she interviews with all the victims or the affected people of the incidents and she writes from their point of view and hence it is almost like fiction and hence we can call it docu-fiction and uh, uh, voices from Chernobyl is written after very very detailed interviews with all those firefighters, firemen, soldiers and uh, their wives and their relatives who of course suffered from this particular nuclear uh, uh, reactor disaster and some of the important titles of Shvetlana Alexievich are War's Unwomanly Face of 1985 Last Witnesses of 1985 Zingy Boys of 1990 Voices from Chernobyl The Oral History of Nuclear Disaster in 1997 and Second Hand Time 2013 and she has of course won a number of international awards the best is of course 2015 Nobel Prize for Literature and now we have to understand more about the very incident of uh, the uh, tragic incident of uh, the disaster of the nuclear reactor uh, and uh, in, in fact uh, the very date is 26th April 1986 so on 26th April 1986 the worst nuclear reactor accident in the history of mankind occurred in Chernobyl and contaminated as vast as three quarters of Europe. It's in fact very shocking reality and Voices from Chernobyl is the only book or rather the first book to present personal accounts of the tragedy. Shvetlana Alexievich, as we know, she went to the very site of uh, the tragedy of the nuclear disaster and she interviewed hundreds of people affected by the meltdown from innocent citizens to firefighters to those called in to clean up disaster and uh, their stories reveal the fear, the anger and uncertainty with which they still live. And we have to remember certain other very important historic facts like the Soviet officials didn't want to reveal about the nuclear meltdown. And a lot of people like uh, miners, soldiers, scientists were asked to do their duty. People were not allowed to ask any questions. Victims were under government surveillance. This is very, very important. So no news, no truth, nothing about the very, very impact of the nuclear disaster was let out to the outer world for a long time. And uh, Shvetlana Alexievich interviewed all the people affected by the uh, nuclear disaster. She comprised of interviews of uh, monologue form. Voices from Chernobyl is a crucially important work, unforgettable in its emotional power and honesty. She's writing from the very point of view of the people affected and it is noted for the very emotion and the different perspectives of those Shvetlana Alexievich listened to come through as heart-rending stories and uh, we today have uh, uh, the voice of uh, uh, a wife of uh, a firefighter we have the voice of uh, the wife of a firefighter and uh, uh, the name of uh, the uh, wife of uh, the firefighter is Ludmila Ignatenko. Ludmila Ignatenko is the name of uh, the person to whom we listen to in the very first uh, part of uh, the important book.
voices from Chernobyl. And uh, she speaks to us about all the difficulties her husband underwent before his tragic death, when he went to, of course, uh, to extinguish the fire at the nuclear reactor as they were informed. They thought that this is just a fire, but it was, of course, not just a fire. It was a very destructive fire which could very easily eliminate the entire Europe and the world. And uh, now we just begin our uh, discussion of uh, the very prescribed area that is the oral history of a nuclear disaster, uh, a solitary human voice, the first part of uh, Voices from Chernobyl. In fact, uh, we are listening to the voice of uh, Ludmila Ignatenko. Ludmila Ignatenko is the person we listen to and uh, of course uh, she tells us about what happened to the life of uh, her husband. The uh, uh, name of her husband is Vasila Ignatenko. Was Vasily Ignatenko. Name of her husband is Vasily Ignatenko. Ignatenko. Russian names. So let us just uh, uh, understand. I'm just going to narrate uh, or tell you the summary of what happened in the life of uh, uh, Ludmila Ignatenko and uh, the firefighter who died, that is Ludmila's husband, Vasily Ignatenko. So the first part of uh, Voices from Chernobyl, a solitary human voice is narrated from the point of view of uh, Ludmila Ignatenko, wife of the deceased fireman, the firefighter Vasily Ignatenko. Let's understand the story of uh, Ludmila and Vasily. Ludmila and Vasily are newlyweds. It is not even a year since they got married. As we understand, as we listen to Ludmila, it is just uh, six or seven months since they got married. And they love each other very much. They're just like lovers. Each time they go out, they walk out hand in hand. Ludmila holds the palms of uh, Vasily very firmly all the time she's walking out and she declares her love for him every now and then. They go together to the market, they go out, so they love each other very much. And uh, it is, as I said, very few months, rather six or seven months since they got married. And now let's understand how the tragedy occurred. He called out to her and uh, told her that there was a fire and uh, he asked her to go to sleep and she told, he, show, he told her he would come back after some time. So he tells her that he would come back after some time and that night he goes to the place where the nuclear disaster uh, occurred. She did, he did not come back. He did not come back. And she was very upset. She was really very upset. In the morning, she knew that he was in the hospital. And uh, she goes to the hospital. She was very upset and worried. And uh, she just uh, saw him in the hospital. And it was, of course, a very, very shocking scene because she remembers when he was going out he told her close the window and go back to sleep i'll come back very soon and she thought that he was coming back now in the hospital Vasily is looking quiet swollen and puffed up his entire face and cheek and body is swollen and puffed up and it was it is quite difficult for anybody to understand that this is so and so. She knew because she loved him so much. 
she stood beside him she cared for him and uh, not ludmila alone there were many people affected by the nuclear disaster like that many firefighters were there many soldiers were there they were all swollen and puffed up and all the wives and relatives and mothers sons and daughters and far parents of these people stood inside and outside the hospital and these people the increasing number of these people is a botheration to the hospital authorities to the government and uh, they are asking them including rubina okay just uh, bring them milk and they go out and bring a lot of milk milk will of course uh, make these people better or will help them remain healthy and they go out and they buy a lot of milk for all the people there including vasily ignatenko lutmila's husband and now the uh, hospital authorities ask them to of course uh, go to their homes and come back with clothing so all these people go home and take their clothing because all the patients uh, including vasily Uh, they are swollen up and uh, their clothing is not fitting to them they need bigger because they are swollen up by the time all these people come the doctors and the government authorities before them they were taken to a very special hospital in moscow and uh, uh, it is of course very very saddening to ludmila as well as all the other wives and relatives because they could not see their dear ones in the hospital that was a clever trick of uh, the hospital authorities to keep them away but they don't give up they want to see them and they go to moscow they come to the police authorities they speak to the police authorities uh, ludmila also speaks to all these people and uh, she comes to know that they are in a hospital which is special especially caring for people suffering from radiation now the doctors and the medical team do not permit outsiders or or anyone else to enter the hospital because these people are substances of radiation and the relatives who come near the patients will also suffer from radiation but Ludmila Ignatenko is imploring and pleading to one uh, uh, a medical official there and uh, there is a very very touching interview between that is of course the medical professional is asking Ludmila a series of questions do you have children in fact she is only pregnant she is 6 months pregnant she doesn't have kids but she says yes i have because if she has kids of course although she suffers from radiation it doesn't matter it could be just neglected and she says yes because she wants to be beside vasily her husband whom she loves as she loves herself she told the medical authority i have two kids a boy and a girl and she gets permission she enters the hospital she stay, stays with her husband and uh, we understand that this is of course very very problematic for her this is going to affect her health and she sees her husband vasily ignatenko she also sees the other firefighters affected by radiation and she decides to stay with him she cares for him and uh, he is also upset and worried one day as they are talking simple things he expressed his desire to see the baby ludmila carries and they speak about the baby that is going to be born as they speak both of them know that vasily is not going to live long vasily also knows that he is prepared and he says that he loves to see his son or daughter and they think whether it is going to be a boy or a girl and he suggests that uh, if it's a boy he must be called uh, 
uh, vastly. If it's a girl, it should be, she must be called uh, Natashanka or Natasha. This is in fact uh, the very suggested names for the baby. And uh, after that, of course, the condition of uh, Vasily is becoming very, very worse. It's so painful. The consequences of uh, radiation is very, very shocking. And uh, he is just uh, passing uh, uh, stool 20, 25 times a, a, a day. He is just uh, vomiting and he is vomiting internal organs. His part of his liver is vomited, part of his uh, uh, internal organs and all that is stuck inside his mouth and uh, Ludmila, the wife, has to collect all that, clean all that, take the sanitary tray. Yes, she shows so much of uh, loyalty, cares for him, loves him, stands beside him all the time and uh, now she is of course very very tired and uh, a lot of uh, other fighters die, firefighters die and uh, his death is also Im imminent. The hospital authorities, authorities ask her to be very careful to go home because she is of course uh, yeah, she knows that she is pregnant and uh, these people, they repeatedly say they are not men anymore. They are radioactive radiation substances, substances from which radiation can occur. Very, very toxic and poisonous substances they are. They are no more human beings, a substance of radiation. And uh, one, one day when uh, they are together, he speaks to her that it is of course a pleasant moment because they are in Moscow and some time before the incident he promised her that he would take her to Moscow one day. Now he is sure that he is going to die and he cannot take her to Moscow anymore and he is asking her to look out, out to the Moscow city and it is we day, it is the victory day, it is the day of the commemoration of uh, victory of Russia over the Germans in the World War and the entire city is very beautifully decorated and they are just looking out and she is happy but she is sad that very soon he will not uh, be, he will be leaving her and uh, now moments pass, days pass very soon he is going to die and it happens. She was away from him for some time. She was in her room for a small uh, rest, to rest for some time. Very soon there is a telephone call and she is informed that he was crying out for her. She is just rushing. By the time she comes, he is no more, he is dead. It's, it's just painful for her. And later, of course, his body is taken to the mortuary. The body is embalmed and it is under the custody of the government because these people are treated like heroes and the government is burying them in a special area, special cemetery. And these people have to sign the document that they, these heroes are going to be the belongings of the government and all this is very painful for Ludmila and the other relatives of uh, firefighters and soldiers who died in this nuclear disaster. Later she comes to her home thereafter the government is giving her a flat, a very good flat and she lives there and uh, after some time her time is up for, of course, giving birth to the baby. And it was, of course, two weeks early. She had come to the cemetery where her husband Vasily was buried. And uh, very, very soon she has pain. And she gives birth to a daughter, a baby girl. After four hours of the birth of uh, the baby girl, 
the baby died. The baby was suffering from a lot of diseases like liver cirrhosis, all this caused by radiation. And she was sad that the government and the doctors and the medical authority there were they were going to let her have the body. The body was again going to be taken to special, highly protected uh, cemetery for funeral. And she is sad that it's not hers. Her baby is not hers. Painful again. But she just uh, calls the baby Natasha, as Vasily wished. And uh, later, the very, very narration comes to an end from the point of view of Yudmila herself. She, ter she told that, she tells us that there are many people like her who suffer even now. And all these people, they do not want to go away. They still work for the reactor. They still live there and most of them have diseases. They die all on a sudden suffer from cardiac problem, suffer from many other diseases and they die. And she says that this is in fact a story of love for all these people, love for her own husband. And in fact, as we read or as we understand, these are all monuments, all these interviews, including the interview of Shotlan Alexievich with Ludmila uh, Ignatenko and all the other interviews are voices from Chernobyl. They are polyphonic writings of Shvetlana Alexievich. They are in fact representations of copies of, or records of uh, monuments to suffering and, and courage in our time. So this is the content of uh, the very uh, uh, book or rather the extract that is prescribed for us. And now we are just going to discuss the questions and answers of uh, the very extract, a solitary human voice. Let's discuss the questions and answers. We are discussing the questions and answers of uh, Shvetlana Alexievich's Voices from Chernobyl. We are in page number 84. Question number one, Shvetlana Alexievich won the Nobel Prize for Literature in which year? The answer is 2015. Question number two. The excerpt is taken from the book Voices from Chernobyl. Number three. Voices from Chernobyl records the worst nuclear reactor accident in Chernobyl in the year 1986. Next question. Whose voice is recorded here? Answer is Ludmila Ignatenko. The wife of uh, the deceased firefighter was Lee Ignatenko. Next question. Name the deceased firefighter. I told you right now. Was Lee Ignatenko. Now we come to the short questions. What was Was Lee Ignatenko's job? Where did he work? Was Lee Ignatenko was a fireman or a firefighter. He worked in the... Uh, Department of Fire works near to the nuclear reactor. Uh, yeah, nu nuclear reactor. That's it. How was Vasily Ignatenko after the explosion? After the explosion, Vasily Ignatenko went to the site for extinguishing fire and he was affected by radiation. His entire body was swollen up and puffed up his face and his full body was uh, swollen and puffed up. Next question. Why was Ludmila not allowed to go near her husband? Ludmila was not allowed to go near her husband because her husband was a substance which was capable of, which used to emit uh, radio, uh, rad radiation and he, his, his, his body was considered a substance of radiation and hence she was not permitted to go near her husband. All the uh, firefighters affected in the nuclear disaster, they were all substances of radiation. What did Ludmila name her baby and why? Ludmila named her baby Natasha 
because that was the wish of Vasily Ignatenko. Before his death, he asked her to name her baby if it was a girl, Natasha. How did her baby die? Her baby died of uh, liver cirrhosis and a uh, lot of problems. Uh, that was, of course, uh, the baby heart problems of the heart and all. All this is caused by radiation and liver cirrhosis is one of the main reasons for the sudden death of uh, the baby of uh, Ludmila. Now the next question, how does Svetlana Alexievich record the personal accounts of the tragedy in her work, Voices from Chernob Chernobyl? Svetlana Alexievich, the Nobel Prize uh, winner of 2015, Nobel Prize for Literature, is noted for her peculiar writing narr narrative style. Although a journalist, she is writing in a very special way and uh, the Nobel Prize Committee mentions that her voices from Chernobyl is a polyphonic narrative. We listen to many people talking and her voices from Chernobyl is in fact a monument of uh, suffering and uh, courage in our time. What Shvetlana Alexievich does in her uh, important title is she goes to the uh, uh, affected people of uh, uh, the nuclear disaster. She interviews them, she asks them a lot of questions and uh, she listens to them patiently. She interviewed hundreds of people who were affected by the nuclear re the reactor disaster. Uh, say for example there were a lot of people who died uh, and she speaks to the wives and mothers and sons and daughters and parents of these firefighters and soldiers and she's writing all this in the point of view of those people and it is written in a very emotional language and all the readers feel the very pain of those people and uh, we are asked not to have any more nuclear weapons or nuclear energy or nuclear reactors because it's very very dangerous and detrimental to humanity as a whole. Next question, recount the story of Ludmila Ignatenko as narrated by Shvetlana Alexievich. I told it some time ago in the lecture and of course I don't have to say that uh, but I can just say it in two sentences. They were newly wed, they were lovers, uh, very intimately loving each other, walking out and in all the time, hand in hand. Suddenly a nuclear reactor a disaster. Ludmila's husband Vasily in hospital dies in very few dies, pathetic death. Even the very baby born to Ludmila passes away and uh, this is the very very evil aspect of nuclear weapons and nuclear energy, nuclear reactors. Now we come to the next question. Attempt an essay on the following questions. Describe how Shvetlana Alexievich's book Voice from Chernobyl becomes a monument to suffering and courage in our time. Of course, this is a monument to suffering and courage in our time because Shvetlana Alexievich is interviewing all the affected people and she is writing down or copying or recording the very voices of all the people who lost their husbands, their uh, sons and sons and of course uh, their uh, uh, parents and uh, this is very painful and uh, because of that reason we can say that this is in fact a monument to suffering, suffering of the very firefighters and soldiers, suffering of the others, the relatives and this is also a monument of courage because this is about the courage of these firefighters. They are ready to live for the others, they live for their fellow men, they live for of course their country and this is also about the courage of those people who sacrifice their sons and uh, fathers and uh, of course uh, husbands for the country and uh, this is a monument to suffering and courage. How does Shvetlana Alexievich react to human enthusiasm for nuclear power? Shvetlana Alexievich is very critical of uh, the enthusiasm of uh, our international and national le leaders for nuclear power and she very very openly admits the fact that nuclear reactors and nuclear power will 
uh, eliminate humanity, eliminate humanity, human, human beings will die out one day sooner than later if we have more of nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons. And this is a, a very powerful criticism, blistering criticism of uh, the craze of modern man for power and uh, craze of modern man, man for energy and of course uh, weapons and she is warning beware life is going to be in danger life is going to end if we have disasters like this reactors like this nuclear weapons like this okay so with this we come to the end of the discussion of uh, the uh, wonderful book voices from chernobyl of shwetlana alexievich thank you very much for listening may god bless you